everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. Now usually I would upload my scrapbook layout, but I wanted to do something a bit different and very special and something that I have a huge interest in. So today is November the 11th, 2018, which is Remembrance Sunday, and it's also the 100th anniversary of the end of World War One. And I have these really beautiful World War One silks or silk postcards. Now these are very rare and something I've had for a while and they are beautiful and I thought I would share them and show you a way of making these because I've made a card. So these were made by the kind of local workers and refugees in northern France and Belgium during you know World War I. Um, they actually came about in the 1900s but they became very popular within the World War and the soldiers would buy them and send them home to their loved ones, family, friends. So these are very rare and I am so pleased that I've been able to get these three. Like I said, I bought these at a market and um, it was like an antiques market and I didn't pay too much for them, but they are, you know, they are harder to find. Now, basically this is a embroidery and you can see here, and it's all with a silk thread. It's an untwisted silk. And for anybody that is interested in embroidery, they the most common stitches were satin stitch, back stitch, running stitch, and stem stitch. And you can just see the shine there that this still gives, and the colours. I mean, this is a hundred years old that I'm holding, and you know, for something to still be this well preserved. Now, the beauty of these, these were obviously a postcard. And you can see here, this one has been filled out. This went to Mrs. Philpot in Kent, England. And inside is this beautiful little card. So this says to my dear mother. So Mrs. Philpot was his mum. And this says my Christmas wishes. And it is actually embossed. So even a hundred years ago, we had embossing. And there is still a very, very slight little shimmer to it. And then on the back, they would sometimes write a note. Now these, I'm, I'm told from the person I brought them from, are all from the same family. So I know that this soldier was called Sid, because on another one here is this one. And I just find it really quite touching and emotional to know whether, you know, did this man survive? You know, how, it just, I'd love to have been able to find out more, but unfortunately I, I won't be able to. But... This one here says, with loving wishes, Sid. And again, it's just a lovely little card there with all the flags and just look at all the little, pretty little um, images, you know, even back then and the color, again, the colors are just so, so vibrant. So like I said, these are very, very delicate. So I'm just gonna pop that one back in there. And that one didn't get filled out on the back. And then this last one here is beautiful um, with these pansy flowers, souvenir from Belgium. And then this one here is really cute. My heart's greetings, and you can see there that lady. And on the back here it says mother from Sid. So yeah, so I just have these three, and if I did ever see any more, I would certainly look at snapping them up because it's a rare piece of history, something that I'm interested in. Not only is it obviously to do with paper craft, but uh, yeah, I just think it just kind of reminds us of how much just sending, you know, a postcard, a card, means to someone. This was the only means of communication back then through postcards and letters. And this was the lifeline for a lot of people, you know, they would, you know, be, you know, desperate to hear from their loved ones. And, and these were the things that they would, you know, be receiving. So that's just a little bit, a little bit of a history, just a few kind of, um, you know, bits that I know about it. If you do want to find out, there's lots of information on, you know, the internet. And have a little look on like Amazon and eBay or private sellers and you can have a little bit, you know, more of a search because there's some amazing designs. I mean, these are beautiful anyway, but have a look. I mean, yeah, they're incredible. So we're going to actually be making one of these today. I've kind of done an, a, a version. And also I just thought I'd show you because I was just going through some of my old stuff. This is just a selection. I've got loads, but these are old postcards, which is another thing that I just love to collect. There's a Christmas scene and this one here is from 1906. So again, this is over 100 years old, but on the top here, can you see if it's going to catch it? That is all gold embossing to wish you a happy Christmas. 
Um, and I just love it. I I can I just keep these all in a letter rack, and I just pull them out sometimes and just look through them. I mean, that's an old Christmas one there. They're not all filled out. Um, to Edwin from Jen, wishing you a merry many happy returns of the day. So that's a brother on his birthday. Um, again, they've they've all got this one's an Easter one. I just think, yeah, it's, and that actually says a joyful eager tide, Easter tide, Easter tide, call it eager tide. <laughs> what we all about? Her first duty. I mean, look at that. That's just, yeah. So this was just something that I. These are really old, very very old postcards. This one here is 1908. So again, that's a hundred years old. Uh, in December, actually, December the 24th. Wishing you a happy Christmas and bright new year from Mr. and Mrs. H. Dunstall. East York, I believe, Rochester. Miss Grace, something, I can't quite read it all. But anyway, I have lots of these um, and I find them in charity shops and all sorts of stuff. So that was just, yeah, I just wanted to bring you something a bit different this Sunday. So I am talking a lot, but hopefully you don't mind. So this was the one that I've put together. Now this was kind of me playing around. There, um, there are a few things that I'm not happy with that I'm going to change in the next one. I think it's too white, that's one of them. But I have done the embossing on the border, like the originals. And then I've created just a nice little kind of, you know, scene. Well, not scene, but, you know, the flowers and the sentiment there. And then inside I've got my little card there to someone who makes others so happy. And I've just stamped the same image there on the front. And then that just sits there inside. Now I want to lift that up a bit because it does slide in there. But I'm just, like I said, I've got a few little things that I'm going to change about this one. And I've got then the bow with the ribbon. And then inside I just need to mat that. And then obviously you can fill it out as normal. So it's a top folding card, which I think does look nice. Now these silks were put on cards as well. So during, you know, over the years, and the, the soldiers would actually ask the... The local ladies to you know personalize them as well or you know have them mounted on a card so they would pay more um, so there are different versions uh, floating around and if you ever find one with the original envelope which is like a tracing paper a brown tracing paper um, then those are you know even more because there's very very few of those because people would receive them rip them up like we do today we rip the envelopes and throw them away so yeah, so this is the one I've done, so I'm really pleased with it. It's a 5 by 7 just because the, the things I'm using, that's what it fitted for, was a 5 by 7 card. But, I mean, that there, to me, is more of an A2 size. So, um, yeah. This is just to give you inspiration, really, and, you know, then you can go away and, and do what you want. So, I have already got some bits and pieces here. So, this one I'm going to do on a white card base, and then I've got my mat to go on top. So, this is a 5 by 7 card base. And then this mat going on top here is uh, four and seven eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch. So it just gives me that one eighth of an inch white border. And then this is what I'm going to be cutting my actual kind of envelope. Um, you know, yeah, the envelope here on top out of the white against the red. And I think that's just going to work better. So the red is actually what I'm going to end up embossing. And then I've just got this large rectangle frame here. So... In terms of measurements, they're the only ones I'm really going to give you is the, the card base size because everything else is dependent on what you have. So I went and raided my um, dies and I found these two uh, little kind of border edge dies, really pretty. And I used this one on this one here um, and then I'm going to use this one today. So that's kind of why you can't really, I can't, I think these were free in a magazine a long time ago and these measure five and a half in length so again if you've got anything kind of that length then you would be able to follow this tutorial um, you know more accurately okay so first of all I want to I've just rounded off the corners there I want to cut this frame out and then I will emboss it afterwards so I'm just going to grab some of my washi tape and just come up a bit there I've got more of my card in shot than I do this piece here there we go and just kind of make sure that sits nice and centered okay so there's my frame next I'm going to grab my embossing folder so I've got this one here which is not Christmassy so this is going to be a Christmas card but it's um, I think it's still going to be fine now I want to make sure I get 
kind of because you've got kind of blank spaces here at the end so I just want to make sure I get an even kind of blank bit at the end so I'm going to kind of just come up a little bit like so. So I'm just going to run that through my dye machine. Okay, so yeah, perfect. So I've got a nice, even, kind of slightly blank part on each side there. So that is now going to sit on here, like so. Okay, so next what we need to do is cut our these pieces here. Now I've cut a piece of cardstock that fits underneath here perfectly. So this piece here is six and a half by four and a half. Okay. Now what you want to do is this piece here, you obviously need it to be further down because look, this is, if you imagine, that's that piece there and then this is cut kind of through the middle. So I want this to sit just a little bit higher up. Let's have it about there. I reckon that's right. You want to get it nice and straight and again I'm going to use a little bit of my washi tape like so and then I'm just going to run that through my die cut machine. Okay and then I'm just going to peel that piece off. You do get a kind of impressed line. You can't really see it there. I'm not too worried because once I stamp over it you're not going to see it anyway. But now what we're going to do is we're going to cut all the way up there and there. So it actually becomes two separate pieces. So if I go along the side here first, just very neatly, just snip in like so. Okay. And then I'm actually now going to use my trimmer and I'm just going to get these sides really nice and neat. So I'm just going to trim right to the edge there. Okay. And again, this one, I'll just line it up with my grid so I know it's nice and straight. Okay, now this will probably be trimmed again in a moment because we now need to kind of line it all up. The bottom one you don't need to worry about because that one we will put into place in a second. But this now may just perfectly, no it does, it fits through perfectly. I don't need to trim it at all. And I'm just going to score a quarter of an inch tab because I want to have a nice area to uh, to stamp on and then basically just fold that one and then what's going to happen is once we've stamped and decorated it this piece will stick underneath that side there creating your flap for your kind of envelope this piece will then stick underneath and we will line it up so it closes perfectly. Sorry, I keep coming out of shot. There we go. But we're going to now stamp all of this so it stands out a lot more. And I'm going to also add ribbon and all that kind of stuff. So I've just gone and raided all of my uh, stamps. And I have this one here, which I think was an old magazine freebie. But it's got this little poncettia um, stamp, which I'm going to use for that one there. So I'm going to use that and possibly a few other sprigs. The thing I'm going to do differently with this one is I'm going to cover all of this with flowers and I'm actually going to have something stamped on the bottom part instead. I just think it might look a bit better. So I'm going to speed this section up but you will get to see what it is that I'm actually going to be stamping.
so that's what I've done. So I've just, just yeah, just stamped loads of those poinsettia flowers and filled it in with leaves and little flowers and some sprigs and stuff, and just tried to make it really festive. I'm going to be putting a, quite a big bow over this as well, so um, I wasn't too worried on, you know, a lot of it because it is going to be hidden. So what I'm going to do now is attach it to the frame. So I'm just going to run some double-sided tape along that top piece that I just um, put the score line like so perfectly with that score line like so okay so now we've got our little flap and then I'm going to be putting it on some foam adhesive and then that's going to go on there so next we can stick this but before I do so, I do want to um, stamp on this. So I am planning, I want to use this one here. Again, I wanted to try and stick with um, stamps that look like they are vintage. So this one just says here, it is Christmas in the heart that puts Christmas in the air. And I'm gonna stamp that down the bottom here. So again, I wanna make sure that I get this in the middle. Bearing in mind, some of this is also going to be, so you want to do it in the middle of that, that pattern, not the middle of the paper. So I think that's about there. Again, I'm just going to use my first mark. Move that one over there. Oh, that's lovely. That's really, really pretty. Right, let's get rid of that. You can see there how nice that looks. So I also want to stamp some more of the kind of flowers and some of those sprigs. So I'm just gonna do that again. ahead and just framed that sentiment with loads of those same sprigs that were up here because then that's going to go over the top in fact you're not really going to see oh didn't think about that did I you're not even going to see the ones on the bottom right I'm going to change this because what you would usually do or that's what I did is line that up so it sits perfectly back in that bit there but I don't want to lose that all that sprig detail so I'm actually just going to have mine just flapping over so that when you lift it up you still get to see all of that there and all along the bottom so what I'm going to do is grab oh don't want that grab my really thin red tape you just want to run a thin strip along the bottom or you'll be using wet glue if that's what you've got I'm going to put one there and then just up each side okay and then I'm going to sit that down and I'm going to pop this over the top now I would usually do it the other way but I'm going to do it this way because I want to make sure that I get as much of that detail in as possible I think about there so I'm going to stick that down so now that will go on our card on some foam adhesive like so and then we're going to have that little envelope inside i think that looks really quite sweet very christmasy and very vintage looking which is what i wanted to get okay so now i'm just going to pop some foam on the back okay so i have gone ahead and i've stuck my bow down i've also put a couple of my real looking leaves behind there as well and i just think it's all starting to look really really pretty really old and you know it's got that nice vintage look which is what I wanted. I've already gone ahead and done my card which I've just done matching there and then I've just got some of these flat back red pearls and I'm just kind of really pushing them in to the top of that bow there just to again just to give it something extra. A little bit of sparkle or shine. I'm going to do groups of three. They kind of look like berries. I know I'm not using holly but it's it's that Christmas kind of thing. So I'm going to just put three there you can just see them in there they look quite sweet and I think that's it I don't really want to go too too crazy with it I don't think I need to put any on there but yeah there you go that is my inspired World War One silk card and um, I hope you like it there's the other one so again it's the thank you one with the little card and there's this one here I mean I'm going to put a white piece on the back as well just so I can pop a little message on that but that will now sit, and because it's on foam, it sits in there a lot easier, because it's obviously raised. But how cute is that? I just think they are, they're so sweet. Really nice little 
different kind of style card. Um, I hope it's um, I've shown you something new, a little bit of history class, <laughs> I don't know, and um, I hope you'll take a minute to remember you know the lives that were lost to give us the the life that I've been able to live and um, you know I appreciate them every day and um, coming from a military family um, this has always been something that's very close to my heart so without going into too much details and stuff because I understand that not everybody will remember this or acknowledge this day and all that kind of stuff so I don't want to get into all the politics of it but anyway that's something that I like and it's close to my heart so I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and yeah I'll be back again on Monday with a normal Christmas project. Thanks for watching, bye!